Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to part four of why does the derivative of x to the n with respect to x equal n times x to the n minus one. So in parts one, two, and three, I just covered some math that I thought you guys would want to understand before watching this proof. So part one, I talked about factorials. Part two, I talked about combinations. And part three, I talked about the binomial theorem. So in this part, we're just going to prove this statement. And so let's just go ahead and just look at the definition of just the derivative of some function f of x. So we know that we can figure out the derivative of some function f of x by taking the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And for our case, our f of x is going to be x to the n. We're trying to find the derivative with respect to x of x to the n. So our f of x is just going to be x to the n. And so basically what we're going to do is we can just replace f of x with x to the n. So this guy right here, f of x, we're just going to change x to the n since that's what we're trying to find here. And uh, right here we have f of x plus h. So we can find that by just changing the x's to x plus h. So f of x plus h is equal to x plus h to the n. So this term right here we can just change to x plus h to the n. And then minus f of x, f of x was x to the n. So we'll just put x to the n here. So now if we can figure out what this limit is, then we found the derivative of x to the n with respect to x. So let's look at this term right here and we'll just go ahead and expand that with the binomial theorem that I talked about in part three. So now we're just going to look at the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h to the n. We're going to expand this by using the binomial theorem. So the binomial theorem tells us that this right here, that first term, is equal to n choose 0, x to the n, h to the 0, plus n choose 1, x to the n minus 1, h choose 1, plus n choose 2, x to the n minus 2, h squared, plus, and that pattern keeps on uh, continuing up until the very last term where we have n choose n, x to the 0, h to the n. So if you don't know how I did this right here, just go ahead and watch part 3 of this playlist. And uh, basically we just use the binomial theorem to just expand x plus h to the n. So all of this stuff right here is just the same thing as x plus h to the n. And so then for this next term on the numerator, we can just go ahead and write that down, minus x to the n. So now we have the entire numerator here. So now we just simply need to divide all of this by h. So we just rewrote this limit in a little bit different form here. And so now let's just kind of uh, try to simplify some of these terms. So here we have combinations as the coefficients. And I covered combinations in part two of this playlist, so if you're not sure how to calculate a combination, go ahead and watch part two of the playlist. But basically, if we were to find the combination of n choose zero, well, we would find that that's just simply equal to one. And then h to the zero power, anything to the zero power is simply equal to one. So this first term becomes one times x to the n times one. And that's really just equal to x to the n. We're just multiplying it by 1 a couple times, so it's still x to the n. And so now if we look at this first term and this last term, we have a positive x to the n and a negative x to the n. So x to the n minus x to the n equals 0. So basically these two cancel right here. So we can just kind of get rid of both of those now. So those two are gone. So now let's just go ahead and look at this guy right here. n choose 1. So if we were to calculate that combination, we would find out that that is just simply equal to n. And so now let's just go ahead and divide each of these terms by this h down here. So this is h to the first power, or just simply h. So h divided by h here, so these two just cancel out. And then this h is going to cancel with that h, making this h to the first power. And then at the very end here, we're just going to have this h canceling out with one of these h's. So this is going to be h to the n minus 1. And then all the way in between, we just divide out an h from each of these terms in here. So now this h canceled out with all of these, so we just have 1 down here now. 
And uh, so basically, if we we're going to take the limit of this now, all of the h's that remain would just simply change to zero. So we don't have an h here anymore. This one canceled out. But here we have an h. So that becomes zero. And down here we have an h at the end. That's zero. And all of the terms in between all have h's still. And uh, so basically we have zero times all that stuff, which is just equal to zero. At the end we have zero times whatever else is there. That's just equal to zero. And we just have zeros all the way down. They all are multiplied by zero now, since all of the h's turn to zero, since we're taking the limit as h approaches zero. So really, all of these terms right here go to zero, and we're simply left with this guy right here, which is n times x to the n minus one. So we have n times x to the n minus one, and that's divided by one. And really, anything divided by one is just simply itself. So this is just n times x to the n minus one. So basically, we started out with the derivative of x to the n with respect to x. We defined it this way right here. And then we just uh, expanded this part by using the binomial theorem. And then we found that the first and last term canceled. And then we just realized that once we divide by our h, then all of these terms go to zero when we take the limit. And this term right here is the only one that remains. So that's really all there is to the proof. We just found that the derivative of x to the n with respect to x is equal to this part that remained right here, which is n times x to the n minus 1. So that's the proof right there. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave comments on uh, what you think about this demonstration. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.